Good day, Wonder Nurses. Today, I will discuss about burn, myasthenia gravis, and Guillain Barre syndrome. We will focus on some important points with regards to these topics. Let's start! First topic is burn. It damages the cell in the layers of the skin that results to depletion of intracellular fluid and electrolytes. Categories of burn thickness First degree or the superficial partial thickness burn. It involves only the epidermal layer of the skin. Manifestations include pain that can be relieved by cooling or by putting it to running water. Arrhythmia, possible blisters may be present, and blanching. Next is second degree or the deep dermal partial thickness burn. It involves the epidermal and dermal layer of the skin. It is sensitive to cold air. There is pain oozing fluid-filled vesicles, erythema, and edema. Lastly, we have third degree or the full thickness burn. It involves the epidermal, dermal, subcutaneous layers, nerve endings, muscle, and bone. It is painless, dry, charred, and broken skin with exposed fat. Methods to estimate the extent of burn. First, we have Lunt and Browder method. This method is used for estimating the extent of burns for different body proportions that occur with age. It is the preferred method for children instead of using the rule of 9 due to the size of the head that occupies a large proportion and the lower limbs are smaller compared to the adult. It is more accurate and it can be used to determine the patient's exact fluid replacement requirement. Next is the rule of 9. In this method, the patient's body is divided into different sections and each section represents 9% of the total body area. These are the percentage in each section for adults and for children. Lastly, we have the palm method. This method is used for scattered burns. The size of the patient's palm is approximately 1% of the total body surface area. Types of burn. First, we have chemical burns. It is the ingestion or inhalation of acids or alkalis and tissue contact. Next is radiation burns. It is the exposure to x-rays, UV light, or any radioactive sources. Next is thermal burns like frostbite, scald, contact to hot surfaces, and exposure to flame, steam, or hot liquids. Lastly, we have electrical burns. It is the exposure to lightning or electrical wires. Diagnostic test, blood chemistry test. It will show increased potassium level and a decreased sodium and serum albumin level. Hematology will show increased hemoglobin and hematocrit and a decreased platelet and WBC count. 24-hour urine collection will show a decreased creatinine clearance and negative nitrogen balance. ABG will show metabolic acidosis. Management The primary goal is to protect the vital organs and to prevent hypovolemic shock. Clean and cover the wound to prevent contamination. For chemical burns, irrigate it using clean running water. IV therapy for hydration and electrolyte replacement. Monitor urine output because it is the vital assessment for cardiac output and tissue perfusion. Diet, high protein, 
high carbohydrates, and high calories. This is to promote wound healing and prevent infection. Drug therapy, blood transfusion, escarotomy, which is the surgical excision of burned tissue, and skin grafting if necessary. Before we proceed to myasthenia gravis and Guillain-Barre syndrome, please click the subscribe button below. I really, really appreciate the support. Let's proceed. Myasthenia gravis. It is a rare, chronic, autoimmune neuromuscular disorder that causes weakness of the skeletal muscles. The exact cause is still unknown. It is characterized by a disturbance in transmission of nerve impulses at neuromuscular junctions. This transmission defect results from a deficiency in release of acetylcholine or a deficient number of acetylcholine receptor sites. Possible causative factors. First, it is autoimmune disease. The antibody destroys the acetylcholine receptor site. Second, excessive cholinesterase. Cholinesterase destroys the acetylcholine. These two factors will result to insufficient acetylcholine in the body. What is acetylcholine? It is the chief neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system that contracts smooth muscles, slows heart rate, dilates blood vessels, and increases body secretions. Therefore, a decreased acetylcholine will decrease the contraction or strength of smooth muscle movements. It is a descending paralysis, manifestations, ptosis, diplopia, and or strabismus, dysphagia, drooling, dysarthria, the disarticulation of words or poor speech caused by impaired muscle control, impaired speech, mass-like impression, generalized muscle weakness and fatigue, and respiratory distress. Diagnostic test, Neostigmine or Adrofomium test. It is done by giving this medication to the patient and the result will be a relief of symptoms, thus a positive indication of the disease. Management. First, we have anti-cholinesterase inhibitors like pyridostigmine and neostigmine to lessen the excessive cholinesterase that destroys the acetylcholine. Next is glucocorticoids like prednisone and dexamethasone to suppress the immune function. Avoid muscle relaxant and barbiturates because it will just worsen the condition of the patient. Avoid or reduce stress as much as possible. Provide rest periods and improve environmental safety. Monitor neurologic and respiratory status. High calorie diet with soft foods. And plasma pheresis. It is a process in which the liquid part of the blood or plasma is separated from the blood cells. This is done if your plasma contains antibodies that attack the immune system. Guillain-Barre syndrome also known as infectious polyneuritis or acute idiopathic polyneuritis. It is an acute, rapidly progressive, and potentially fatal form of polyneuritis or the inflammation of several peripheral nerves that causes muscle weakness and mild distal sensory loss. The exact cause is still unknown. Possible causative factors. It is an autoimmune disease, a cell-mediated immune response that attacks on peripheral nerves in response to a virus. 
the myelination of peripheral nerves. It means there is a damage in the myelin sheet, which is a protective covering of nerve fibers in your brain, optic nerves, and spinal cord. This will result to slow or even stop the nerve impulses, which will now cause neurological problems. Lastly, there is a recent history of respiratory infection. It is an ascending paralysis. Weakened muscles and reflexes that goes upward. Manifestations. Clumsiness is the first common symptom due to weak muscle extremities. Parastitia of hands and feet. Constipation due to decreased peristalsis. Cardiac paralysis. Paralysis of the diaphragm that results to respiratory depression. A reflexia, or the absence of reflexes, dysphagia or dysartria, which is the disarticulation of words or speech caused by impaired muscle control, facial diplegia that is possibly accompanied by ophthalmoplegia or ocular paralysis, diagnostics, lumbar puncture tests. This is to assess the CSF that will show a cloudy cerebrospinal fluid and an increased protein level. Hematology, it will show an increased WBC count. Management, corticosteroids like prednisone to suppress the immune function. Antiarrhythmics like propranolol or atropine. Plasmapheresis and maintain adequate ventilation. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.